I'm a, I'm a painter, but, but I'll be teaching drawing the self-portrait. Um, I, I, you know, it's interesting. When I was in uh, graduate school and I was doing all these paintings, and they, a lot of them were of me, it, it took a you know, various critiques to actually bring that out, you know, like, you know, that I was doing sort of a diaristic view of um, myself in paintings. And, and, um, and that was just really interesting to me, you know, that I, I didn't take that in. All the years I've been painting, I was my own model. And for some reason, I, it just didn't click in my head that that's what I do. I mean, I usually, I guess I, 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 kind of thought that I was so um, introverted and so busy that I just didn't have time, nor the, the, uh, the, I don't know, the gusto to go out and ask a model to pose for me for a painting that I was thinking of. It was always, um, I was safe with myself. I wanted to use myself as that model. And it's not that I don't like using other models. I always feel like I'm going to do that in another series or in another series. And I am actually working in different series using different people. But it's, it was just safe, I wonder, whether I continue to do that just to use myself to have to explain, you know, to get the message that I was sending across very directly, you know? So I think that's why I became a person that uh, actually did self-portraits in most of my paintings, or, or they became very diaristic. Even if I probably used another person, I still told a very, uh, almost not the same story, but a, a, a individual story, an individual story about myself, you know? Yeah, kind of like your experience or your subjectivity in a way. Yeah, and I also felt like you can't tell somebody else's story. I mean, you can use models to do portraits and, and, and they tell their own story, right? Because when you're doing figurative or anything, you're sending a a subconscious message in your work uh, it goes down to the colors, the positions, um, everything. It just really goes down to everything uh, that you're using in, in the painting, in the composition, you know, whether you know it or not. And that's what I think is really interesting about painting. It's like, no matter whether it's figurative or abstract, it, it really does matter what, what colors you're using, why you're not using those colors, what your palette looks like. Whether you know it or not, you're sending a message, you're making a mark. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, tell me how the astral plane comes in. Well, really I do believe, <laughs> and I this is like a spiritual thing, right? So um, I believe that like while we're working here on this planet, there are souls and, and entities right alongside of us that we just can't see you know, and, and whether they can see us or not, I'm not sure, but I just believe that they're, it's like you're going in between things. Uh, it, it's very interesting. I did a painting um, called, uh, wow, I, I changed the name of it so many times. Um, what is it? It's, it, I think it has something to do with astral planes and it's, and it's like a, a West Philly scene and there's so much going on. There's, a, there's a, a little boy dancing in the street. There's a woman who seems to be on drugs with a, a ghost-like monkey on her back. It's like a phantom. Um, there's uh, people in the background doing all kinds of things. You know, everybody's doing something at the same time. And, and that to me reminded me of the astral planes that are going through my head that I feel like are invisible. I mean, yeah, these people are kissing and holding hands while these people are fighting. And, and it's just sort of like the same thing happening on the same plane. But then I believe that if you look a little closer, that there is another, there is something more invisible to the eye that's actually happening. You know, you can feel its presence and it's haunting, but I believe that's, that's real life. You know, the two that collide and they're always colliding and they always have something to do with the past, the present and the future. You know, so mm. it's very interesting to me. If you can you understand what I'm saying when I say that. Yeah, I mean, I understand it in my own way and I don't know, you know, it's, it's an individual exactly concept. how, how yeah. you understand it. But yeah, I love, I think what it, the way that it gets to me is when you talk about the past, the present and the future all kind yeah. of always living in the same moment and that really makes sense to me because we all function from all those places in a way at once. We're either uh, really thinking about how we're structured by our past experiences 
and living through the present and always dreaming of the future and all of that sort of happening alongside uh, our, our current experience. Or, or just think about it this way. It could be your ancestors or your family that's, you know, that's moving along in their time zone, you know, and you're, I just believe in that. I think things are colliding all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I see uh, that, I see that in your work. I, I, yeah. I, I can sense that there's like a, a separate presence going on, that they are realistic uh, paintings for the most part. But there's figurative, also this yeah. other, yeah, they're figurative, but there's also this other layer often that is evoked by the gesture, the color, the composition. So, yeah. I have, a, um, I know that I'm drawn towards spirit work, you know, and I, you know, I've things like that in the painting. And, you know, every once in a while, I think it will be a challenge to paint something or paint somebody who has passed. Um, you know, and do a series of interesting things like that. Um, I am still contemplating, you know, things like uh, women who have, you know, you know, been preyed upon uh, in our society and, and whether that works into my paintings. You know, I, I, it's not a full concept. It's not a full idea. I don't want to, it's not something I want to dedicate to victims of, um, who have been, you know, murdered or whatever. But, it's something I think about, like whether I could actually, uh, you know, how I could move that into, you know, the fact that, ha, huh, let me see if I can explain this right. I kind of like to hide a lot of what I'm thinking. So I, I do talk in code and I do hold things back. <laughs> and that's why I'm a painter because I talk in code. But, um, but I think that I, I'll watch a series of women who have been uh, victimized. And, and lost their lives because they were preyed upon us, you know, sensational stories, serial murders and things like that. And I do think about like whether I could do a series on that, you know, um, without it being so ghostly, but almost sort of like maybe a dedication, but not an individual dedication, you know, something that's happening that, that has exploited a vulnerability so it's interesting. I, I don't know how that would work in, but I do feel that kind of spirituality, like, you know, do I want to dig deeper into that? Do I want to dig deeper in the paint and, and using a painting to do something like that? You know, I think I have to ask permission though. So mm. if I'm using faces or something. Like awesome. That. Yeah. Well, I would love to hear more of that. For sure. Well, you, it's better you see it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So tell us, um, Tell us about drawing a self-portrait. How do we begin? Where do we Shall start? Shall we get to it? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I'm going to change um, video on you guys. And we'll go to my web camera so we can get closer to the canvas. Oh, not the canvas, but paper. OK. I'm going to try to step out of the way. Um, so it's a little bit too close and we don't see the whole I think it got shifted at, in the process here we go yep there you go I think that's good maybe just a I little bit it, down yeah a little down it's a little there you go the tripod are we good yeah I think that's pretty good okay so I'm using a mirror here and this is where I'm seeing I'm seeing myself I'm usually on another side but I, I think this is good for the webinar what I usually like to do is I like to go straight to, and I'm going to try to make my marks very dark so you can see it because I'm using pencil. And I don't want to use the darkest pencil because, well, I can, I can. Um, let me see what I'm using here. I'm using an HB2. Let me look for a nice four. What would you start out if you weren't doing it for the webinar? Just, yes. Yes. just so we know. Okay, so I usually like to go to my darkest parts first, you know, so I can see. Can you see that? Yeah. And it's like I'm just making marks. And eventually, eventually those things come out as, the, as more mark making comes in. So I don't really want to do line drawing. I don't want to do that. I want to just follow darkness and light. And, and in this sense, my needed eraser or any eraser is just really, really important. 
you know, because I am, I'm drawing, I'm using all my darks, right? Are you following the contour of your face first? I am not. I'm not. Okay. I'm going, I usually go straight for my eyes and I'm just trying to find my center by drawing the darks, the outlines. I, in that way, I'm doing a contour. Yes, I am doing a contour by, by finding where my forehead is, um, where that hairline is. You're right. You're right. I'm using darkness to accentuate and define that, you know, and then Ooh. Here we are. There's my ear. So we got a mark of dark. Here's my eyebrows. You know, I go for the eye first because I believe that is the most important part of recognition. You know, for any figure, if you want, if you want to them to be recognizable, I just believe that the eyes are that window. You know. Any, um, so I'm just gonna start shaping that eye, you know? Any kind of techniques or things to look out for, for um, drawing the eye um, kind of, uh, I don't want to say correctly, but like uh, as precisely to reality as possible or? Um, well, you want to, okay, so you want to, for me, I believe that you are like I'm. A, I'm on the weird side of myself while I'm drawing this for this webinar, so I'm looking at it and it looks like I'm a little cross-eyed here. Um, you do go through that with self-portraits. You go through different phases of people, DNA, things that are recognizable that are not recognizable. Um, don't get dismayed. Just follow your truth. You know. So, what I like, uh, Vita says, you want to follow the truth. So when I'm looking at my eye and I'm following that darkness first, you know, I am also, my eye is, my eye is following the contour of everything. My eye becomes the pencil and it's following the contour of that lid, you know, and I often think of family and things like that. I think of like, oh, well, my eye is like this because of that. Those are the things that go on my head. And it often does the same thing when I'm painting other people. I think, oh, wow, look at that there. Hmm, you know, wow, how that eye is shaped. How, like, where are they from and what do they do? And look at their DNA in that and certain things that you're doing. You know, you're getting to know them, you know eyebrows are really important right so the shape of the eye is so it, it's just important to me and that eye is like it becomes the window of the soul it, you can you could probably not get anything right but if you get those eyes right you've got the person <laughs> you're you're feeling that person you know does that make sense to you all totally yeah yeah. The, they're the windows to the soul, right? Yeah, it, when you're painting and, and drawing, they become so important. Understanding that person um, through art, through, through, through the, the mark making of trying to capture them, it's, it just can get, it can be so important. And it, you just, that's how you lock yourself in. And you lock yourself in that way, you know, by understanding understanding this is how they're made this is how they're built and you want to capture it not just the light that comes on them those are those are poetic and very elegant you know studies after after you've gotten some things done excuse me i'm using my needed eraser but what i really want to start doing is showing you that all this here is shaded right and that also excuse me i'm in the city so you heard that um Argovine. But those are those are also very important that you are, you know, that that shading is important right here. You know, that's important. That's going to help you. Con that's going to help you find your truth. All of it. And that's why I say painters were probably like when they see that lavender on a person's side of their face, they just can't wait to capture it because it's going to help them capture you in your true element, you know? 
not everybody has lavender on the side of their face <laughs> <laughs> or green highlights, you know? You want to capture that of that person. That's so important, you know? Do you have any pointers about scale? Um, I do have pointers. Um, if you're like a little freaked out and you can't like, your, your eye gets nervous and you don't trust it, start to use your pencil as your measurement. You see that? So here I am, I'm trying to, do, trying to shape my eye and I see that the, the enclave here goes down at an angle. That's where my pencil is. Then I'm gonna go right there and I'm gonna go like that. Then I'm gonna take it there and it goes flat right there. Then I'm gonna go like this. I've used my, this is my tool, my pencil, and it becomes my measuring tool. It becomes everything, not just my, my tool to communicate what I see. So that is my tool. Right there, my hair continues into this braid. It's dark, right? This is light, because I dyed my hair. <laughs> but, uh, and I got this big light in here, okay? So I'm gonna continue on, because the eye is what I want. Pupil, the darkness, and then, you don't see it, but it's all dark in here. So this becomes darker. I'm using the side of my pencil, which I usually would not do. Um, I, I'm doing it because of the, the position that I'm in on the, onto this side, which is, to me, it's just a little awkward because I'm right-handed. So, and I hold my pencil kind of funny anyway for most people. So I'm just gonna shade all that in there. Your, um, your pencil, your eraser are like your tools. There are no mistakes in mark making. And if you can, if you can in, in, accept that, then you're, you're just, you're good to go. You know, everything is there for a reason. Even if you have a nervous hand, it's there for a reason. You're making that mark and there are no mistakes, you know, so. There's just none. There are no mistakes. Everything is there for a reason. You just keep it going. All your dark marks. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? We can talk. I, I have a question. Um, so the last time I did a self-portrait, I think I was like a sophomore in college and I'm taking a drawing class yeah. and that was our assignment. Um, and I remember how intense it is to keep staring at yourself in the mirror and how difficult it is to get you yourself to sit still while drawing. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you well, have any you know, suggestions for how like the actual process of like looking at yourself and while drawing yourself, that seems like more complicated than just looking at a model. You really don't want to be so hard on yourself. People move. That's the beauty of, of capturing. You work quickly, but all those movements are absolutely beneficial. So you get up, you go and you go get um, a coffee. You had enough, you need to take a break. You go get your coffee and you come back down and you're not at the same place. So you still have another angle of yourself and it, and it absolutely makes your painting and your work even better. You just don't think that you made a mistake. It, don't be so rigid with it, go with it. It's really quite a, a conversation with yourself. You're having a conversation. I will tell you that when you do your self-portrait, sometimes if you're just, you know, you're so analytical, you start to realize that, oh my God, that looks like, uh, you know, Aunt Vivian or Aunt Eva or somebody, you know, you say, oh my God, that doesn't look like me, that looks like somebody else. or you start to see, well, who is that? And it, it's morphing into you. It's morphing. You're capturing little things that are similar to other people. And it's almost like you're doing a research of yourself. But nonetheless, you are having this great conversation with yourself. And you don't have to be still. No, you don't want to move too much. But you want to be able to uh, see the truth in your eyes and just communicate what you see. And, you, and, and once you do that, pretty much, can, you know, I mean, when, when artists are learning to study the figurative, sometimes the model will move around. And I remember being an undergrad and saying, and saying to the professor, she keeps moving. And he said, I know, 
<laughs> you know, I mean, like that was the whole point. She keeps moving. So you have to, you have to work very quickly to study it, you know? Um, and believe it or not, you may not notice it, but when you back away from this and you finished it, it to, to others, they may see it faster than you, that you really do, you really have captured the essence of something, you know, or that person or even yourself. I think people are very hard on themselves when it comes to self portraiture because they think that, you know, you have to be this master to do it. But in fact, just uh, being truthful with yourself, accepting your truth and accepting what you see is and recording it, you actually are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing and exactly capturing exactly what you're supposed to be capturing. Um, everybody's hand is different, you know? My hand is different than Caravaggio's for sure. <laughs> and you know, I mean like, you know, it's, it, I don't know, but he may have not liked his self-portrait. We don't know, you know, it's up to the artist, you know, but um, it, it, it is a conversation. It is a conversation with yourself. Um, am I answering that question Do, is, about the Yeah, point? no, totally. I feel schooled. <laughs> no, I just feel like you have to be truthful. It's really about truth. And that's probably why artists are so, their eyes are so open and they're so, it's kind of in their fantasy world because they see so much truth in their, in their hand. It's, it's also respecting your hand, you know, respecting what is being recorded and, and understanding that you're part of this kind of weird tribe that does this. And this is your conversation with the world. Uh, just wanting to do it, whether you believe you can or not, just wanting to do this is, is, is part of that truth. You know, you can put your pencils down for years. You can put your paintbrushes down for years, but it doesn't matter. It's what you do. It's the language that you probably knew first in life yeah, that became visual. You know, I, I do believe that. I believe that artists are, a, you know, a certain group. Whether you went to school for it or not, it's something that you're seeing. You see things differently. You probably see it very truthfully. <laughs> so so that, that's also very interesting to me. Speaking of Caravaggio, are there self-portraits that stand out to you or inspire you that you have looked yeah, at from I mean, other artists? Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, you know, Papa had in their museum a museum of like artists and their self-portraits. And um, I believe was, I think it, I think it may have been Cecilia Bow. Did I say her name right, Cecilia Bow? I'm not familiar. Um, and she, um, I think she did a beautiful self-portrait. Those self-portraits of back in time of 1800s and beyond are so important to me, you know, because it's like, oh, Wow, look at there. There he was. He proved that he was here. Um, Barkley Hendricks does some amazing self-portraits. Sometimes I like the one that he did totally nude. You know, he almost plays in his paintings, you know, like uh, jokes for the viewer. And um, those are also very interesting because it's interesting how society sees that, you know, and how the artist sees that. You know, the artist says, I am bringing myself absolutely natural and raw. And, you know, of course, society puts a whole spin on that, you know. I'm using an eraser, but I usually probably, I actually would not use an eraser. So um, forgive me. I usually just, like, make everything into what I want to see, you know. But I'm using also this dark pencil. And I have a, I have a very heavy hand. So I'm just trying to... Uh, go light <laughs> and leaving room for me to uh, add darkness, you know, but. Um, Do you recommend that um, when you start out, I know, you know, in, in this case, we're, we're drawing a lot darker because the yeah, mark doesn't because show up. Yeah. Um, but if um, just, would you recommend starting pretty light and building up the tone? Or? Yeah, I think that would be, that would um, ease your frustration. But not, I mean, but light where you're comfortable and dark where you're comfortable. It is such an individual choice. And I think that it's uh, really about uh, the, where your confidence is in, in the work, you know? Like, as you see, I am going back over things to show that this is darker than that. There's something else that I want to show you. Um, 
I want to tell you about. Um, I want to tell you about how to see lights and dark. Not everything, our paper is white, but there's nothing on our face that is white. I don't care who we are. If you really want to see the gradation in light and color, then take that to your face. So take a piece of white paper and just put it to your face. You can tell that that is not, that light mark that you thought was white is not white. So really, at some point, all this will, should be shaded in like that, you know? And we'll use our eraser to just show where some of the light marks are, but nothing on me is extremely white. It's not natural. It doesn't, with my skin tone, it won't reflect that. And if I was painting it, I would use a cerulean blue mix just to uh, accentuate the light marks on my face. The things that people would think were, were white, I would use like a cerulean um, blue mix to that. And I think the key is also to paint the truth. And so right now I got puffy eyes, it's hot out, but paint the puffy eyes because that will say, you know, that I was out and it was hot and this is how she looks when she's hot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is part of life, you know, just really part of life. So, wanna like really add that. And the darkness starts to come through. And so I'm just, I'm just, now the map, my mouth is very dark. It's like, it's in shadow all the time. So it's like I have like a brown lipstick on all the time. I actually like it, it has all kinds of different colors and darkness. One thing you wanna know is that your mouth is in the middle, end in the middle of your eye all the time. And your ear is always like tops off at your eyebrow and ends at the, at the end of your nose. Those are, so it's always a good thing to study anatomy and, and that helps, you know, cause you know automatically, okay, that doesn't belong there, you know, but always look, don't ever make it up because when you make it up, that's when you become unhappy, you know, with what you're doing. Uh, I do believe when you're doing paintings or drawings of the portrait, that it's all about truth seeking and uh, introduction to that person, to the world, to, to the viewer, you know. So here we go, and this little tough hair back there, and I just shade that in. I try to stay away from lines. I really do. I don't like them. Um, I really just want to stay away from them because th th I don't believe those are true. You know, mm. it's like we are made up of like uh, you know these things that like vibrations of color and. This is the best, I feel like the best way is to just feel it out, you know, feel it out. I saw it does really, really oops, sorry. It oh. does really help to, um, to have kind of the cheat sheet of like the ear starts right by the eyebrow, ends by the nose, the mouth is, you know, I feel yeah. like that's, that would be really helpful for me to yeah. Have, have yeah, it's memorize. True. Yes, it is. So the ears, yeah. I mean, those are the measurements. Those are your natural measurements. This, like this, you know, on anybody's face, that's actually how, that, that's real. That, you know, and now I'm just going to, when I add this darkness in here, I'm accentuating the light. So there is this. Yeah, I'm accentuating the light. So, the time, and you know, I don't, I'm not against other people line drawing. It's just how you feel. It's, it's, it's the, um, you have to get into your zone and however your finger moves to be able to um, communicate data, you know? Some people are really good at that. They can, they're excellent. They can, it's almost like they're, they're taking your picture, you know? And those, I just think that they were meant to do, you know, they're really good. It's not just technique. They're good at studying, studying, you know, the data, like, like a computer. They have an eye and a mind that's like a computer, and I was like that. So I'm going deeper, and I'm still using the same pencil, and I'm going deeper. My darknesses are going to show me where the light is. It's going to show me how to make like any kind of corrections that I need to make. 
it, the one thing I think is very interesting about pencil drawing is because I'm so into color that it just, I have to actually go back to a, um, like an underpainting type of eye of everything is in shades of black and white or, or gray, actually, or olive green. That's what I used to love to do, oil paintings and olive green, so. It seems like the way that you're working is kind of an all over um, I am. process. Like yes. you, don't, you don't spend too much time on one specific no. area, um, but no. you keep going over the whole. Well, I'm getting, this is, this is my method of getting things in. So I'm getting it in. I'm actually just doing the preliminary thing, right? The preliminary sketch. And then I'll be, I'll go back into this with a little bit more detail. You know, I'm just doing the, the beginnings of, sorry, I'm in West Philly, sorry. <laughs> but um, I'm actually just getting into it. So I am all over the place with it. I don't just focus on one thing. Some people do, some people do. And, and, I, and I can work with that, you know. Some people do get into just, I'm gonna work on the eye and that's all I'm gonna work on is the eye. You know, and I'm going to work on both eyes, and that's as far as I got. And then I'm going to go back and do more. And they're really studying that. I work very fast, and I also I make corrections or whatever I'm doing as I go. You know, I work very fast, and I just want to get it all in. And then I that also gives me the time to go back and 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 start to feel um, that spirituality in my paintings. You know, like that's what I do. So I'll get everything in and then I'll work back into it. And then I'll start to make little light touches that actually make it complete. And that gives me a little time to get into my zone and hear my, hear whatever spirit and start adding certain things or not adding certain things, you know? It's very, that's how I am when it comes to my work. I just really, I probably give myself, I probably work very fast and then go back into it. That's exactly how I do things. Well, can you tell us about placing the head on the page? Like, what is, do you have any suggestions, or recommendations? I really, I think that is a, 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 okay, so I really do think that that is a personal thing about composition. Why do you have to work in the center of the page? You can work here if you wanted to. You could do a self-portrait side profile. You could do self-portrait like this, you know, with an angle. You could do a self, oh, excuse me, because you couldn't see me. You could do a self-portrait at an angle. You could do self-portrait any way you want. Um, I think that you shouldn't have to just go in the middle of the page. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're asking? Like, I yeah, mean, like, like, because, like when, when you start a self-portrait, uh -huh. Where, you know, there's this feeling of like, maybe there's a question of like, where do you put the eyes? Where do, where do you, you begin? Yeah, how do you begin and where do you place it on the page? Because I right. know there's like, there, there's a sense, especially when you are, have been an artist for a long time and have been, you know, drawing for a long time, that it's more of a feeling at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, as someone who's like maybe totally new to drawing, Okay, so what you what you want to do is you definitely want to work um, eye to forehead and then eye to nose and then eye to lips to chin. You can take one line and you can go down to the center of your, of, of, uh, let's say your, this is not centered. I'm not centered in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave room for my neck and this shoulder to come out and show that one bicep. Okay, and then in here, it's not. It's just gonna show that, that collarbone. So I think that the best way to, to start, it depends on what you wanna show, what you're, how you're gonna crop it. Uh, you definitely wanna get, and you can also, what well, the best thing would be is to get that one center line down so you know where you are and you know your measurement. You can go line here from, ear to nose, and we know our nose ends there. Then we go ear to eyebrow. We know our eyebrow is there. And here our forehead. So we measure up to our forehead. 
how do you measure? You measure, I say you measure by light and dark. You follow the lights and darks and it tells you. It is a process, an organization in your mind and puzzle making. It's like puzzle, like you're doing a puzzle, you know? But once you have all like your, your forehead, and, and, and this is what I'm trying to say. As you're working, you're going to be correcting measurement. You're going to be correcting things. You're going to say, well, the light comes here. And then there's this dark area here. And then there's this dark area, darker area in here where my nose is going down. This is where my, the bridge of my nose is, right in here, you know? And you say that comes out like this. It comes out into a triangle and that's the end of my nostril. Do you see how I'm, I'm measuring things out now? Mm -hmm. I'm measuring things out by shadow and shade. I'm following the color instead of a contour line. I'm following the darks and lights instead of a contour line. And that, they're, they're just, you're looking and you're recording mark making. I taught a workshop of painting the self-portrait and you would be surprised at how beginner adults were able to do self-portraits of themselves absolutely beautifully. I mean, like just by following lights and darks and understanding that this is a this is the cheekbone right here. I did it abstractly. Look how it all comes together though. It's all coming together. It's like a like a puzzle almost to say. I don't I don't know how else to explain it, but it actually works if you follow that that like what you see in lights and darks. So I didn't sh I didn't do a circle for my head. I did not do that, but you can do it. I didn't do it though. That's not where I started. I started eyebrow to eye. And from the eyebrow to eye, I went up and said, this is the shadow of my forehead. And I know that that shadow meets my hairline. So there's my hairline. And I know that over here, if I take my pencil and go directly and use it as a measuring tool, that that right there is where that braid begins. I can draw lines all over here to show you where things are, but I did not draw a circle for my forehead, for my head. And I did not draw a, ne a line for my neck. I work from the inside out, and that's what I wanna teach you by following lights and darks and mapping these things. It's only one face, it's not gonna go out the face. It's not gonna go anywhere else. It's gonna be on that face. And if you follow that light and dark, you will, you'll start to map out your face, you know? You'll start to map out where the nose is, where the nostrils are. Then you're gonna go back into here and say, this is darker than this area under the nose. They're all dark, but this is darker. So some of that darkness starts to disappear as you start to add darker and darker and lighter and lighter using your eraser, your kneaded eraser or some people like gummy racers. Some people hate needed erasers. So they have gummy racers. Does this make any sense? Yeah, it's really helpful, actually. Like that whole notion of like following the shadows and the highlights as a puzzle and working from the inside out resonates with me a lot. It is. Um, it is. Um, it's like you're literally mapping your face and pencil. Is, I mean, if it, we're going to just do graphite pencils and let's say, you know, let's not deal with color yet, that has got to be the easiest way because you're just, you don't have to worry about what color that is. You just worry about what, where that tone is. Is it a darker tone or a lighter tone? You know, and then you get into the expertise of learning how to use different uh, grades of pencil, which is actually fun. Um, and that's when you really start to really take time and study. You can also... You know, let's say you're working on a self-portrait for a couple days and you really just want this stance, you want these clothes, you just want that. You can take a picture as a reference and, you know, work back and forth. But I think there is something about working live. And working live, you capture a lot. You capture a lot of, um, you capture the spirit somehow. It's like living in there. You know, you're capturing that. So, you know. It's yeah, like, there's a way that um, I did, I did want to talk about that, like the difference from drawing from the mirror versus drawing from the photograph right? Uh, and how different those two things are. It feels like the photograph does a lot of the work of like 
flattening space for something? Yeah, it does because it, the photograph lies. I'm, I'm not, you know, it lies. Um, it, it, it messes with your eyes. So you, you have to almost say like, uh, it's a good thing to study anatomy and, and really study people, really study yourself. If you want to look at, you want to do a, just a separate drawing of your ear, you know, you just do a separate drawing of the ear. You want to start off, you know, you know that the ear starts there, you know, you'll realize that there are things that you are seeing with your naked eye that a camera will never be able to see. The depth of tone and color is, is, is something you'll see with your naked eye. And, and I'm sorry, that's, that's my... You have a baby too? <laughs> He howls whenever there's. I got you. It's okay. I have two dogs. <laughs> They're doing excessive fireworks in Philadelphia. He sounds like a baby. <laughs> so anyway, so this is what you know. And if anybody else has any questions about this, then like if you have questions about what I'm doing here and how this is coming along, feel free. I mean, I may, you may be working on a self-portrait right now, and it may be different. You may be stuck to, you may be really interested in line and feel like I have to follow the line, but I kind of encourage you to, to go further. And, and as far as like smoothing things out and blending things, that's really your option. I don't think it's necessary. You can cross hatch and blend things that way as well. You can cross hatch so things don't look so hard and rigid, you know? You can use your thing, your your pencil to do contouring and and cross hatching and and just cutting off. See that? See how that starts to disappear? It starts to disappear. I can use my pencil, my my eraser and try to soften that, you know? But it really does start to disappear. So blending is one thing. You can use a chamois and blend. You know, you can use a, a paper, a piece of paper and do your smudges. That's okay. You know, this is where you become very important to the self-portrait. This is where you become, you know, the, the, this is where it becomes your work by the mark making that you do. You know, you're, you're doing all these mark making. So it really does become important how you do it. I mean, you could follow me all day long and you'll pick up some things that will be crucial to your, your, your art making. And then the rest of it is all you. And that's what it, really what it has to be. It has to be all you. So I think that a lot of the art that we do is about trusting our eye, trusting it and having confidence in what we see and how we record that. And that's, and it's just about recording, you know, it's just, that's how it is. And, and, and it's amazing to see how people record. It's amazing how people, what people see, what they really see with their naked eye. And if that, you know, I just don't think there's any right way to do it. There's always, you know, learning somebody else's method, which is great, you know, that, that way you learn things about yourself, you know, but you also, I mean, you have to, you know, some people don't like their self-portraits. I don't think that there's anything to like or dislike. It's just a recording of yourself. And a poetic one at that. Have you ever tried to do a self-portrait with like a certain expression that wasn't just your kind of- uh, Yes, yes. Normal I face? Like those. Yes, I like that kind of stuff. And I, and sometimes I'll, I'll be up, uh, you know, I'll put on certain clothes and I'll take pictures of myself, uh, you know, thinking I'm going to do self portraits. It's amazing how many references of myself <laughs> that I do have. Um, you know, I think that that's, that's having fun with your work. You should, I think you should have fun with your work. I think that those are the exciting parts of self portraiture and not to mention like the backgrounds of some of these self portraits too are really, really quite interesting. So this is this very, so I'm gonna go darker here. See, I'm gonna to start to add, now I'm adding like, you know, I'm adding planes over planes over planes. And that becomes really important. I start to notice maybe my eye's not that tiny. Maybe it's a little bigger than that. 
and the pupil is definitely larger. So I'm starting to see, I'm starting to make it. And in this area, it's very dark, very dark. So I'm getting in here, but in here it's extremely dark because that's the depth of my nose. It's going in. So I, I do a lot of mapping, and um, and I'm and I'm it's almost like I'm feeling, I'm feeling the energy, and this is how I get into my zone. I just go, and then by the time I'm done, I have like a very interesting self-portrait that it's very painterly. I would say I have a very painterly touch because I'm yeah because I put a lot of time into painting, but I probably draw like I paint. Somehow, at the end, it, 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 it comes to light. It just really does. And I, I don't know. I think, I, I think it's like a, a concentration and a meditation, you know? Definitely a meditation. So let's go in here. Let's go deeper. Now, if I, if I were to keep this line in here, it, would just, it just wouldn't, it would be flat. I have to add my darkness. I have to. I don't want to get into the. I don't want to cover the painting. I mean the uh, the drawing here. But I have to. I have to add my darkness here because that's what I see. I'm going to do some cross hatching. I'm sorry. I hope that you didn't hear all that. <laughs> it's okay. It's totally okay. Yeah, it's living in the city. Okay, so we get back to where I was. We so, have a question from Michelle, and she's asking what kind of paper you are working on. Okay, so I'm using Strathmore, but um, I have some that I ordered that, like, I have like black paper and white paper, gray paper for, you know, when I'm doing other things like Conte, but I'm just using the regular stretch draft bar paper for, you know, the, just doing this quick, this quick demo. But I, I would say that I like, I like paper that has a little teeth on it, you know, um, because I feel like when you're working hard, when you're working with a heavy hand, that it just, it, it hugs it, you know, you don't actually have to work as, uh, as you don't have to press as I think as hard as you would with a, you know, with a nice toothy um, uh, drawing paper. I, I really do like a, like almost paper that you could use charcoals on. I love that kind of stuff. You know, it holds the work so nicely. You know, with graphite as well. Um, Anne had a question. Um, she's wondering if you use the same kind of ideas when you're painting a portrait. Uh, when I'm when I'm what? Painting your portrait, your self portrait. Yeah, I really do. I it's a meditation. I do use like spiritual ideas. Is that what she means? I'm not sure. Anne, do you mean spiritual or technical? Technical. Yeah, I do think that when I use my brush, um, if you were watching me use my brush, you would notice that I do the same thing with my brush as I'm doing with my pencil. And I hold them um, probably the same. Um, I do believe that painting is just another way of drawing. It's all drawing, really, if we really want to, like, you know, just different, just different mediums, you know, just different yeah, basically just different mediums. Like somebody uses charcoal, I use oil paint. I mean, to a degree, you know? I mean, of course you can see the line in this differently. You can see it differently, but the hand is still the same. Does that answer your question, Anne? If not, um, I can try to ask it, answer it a different way. So when you are drawing, you're going back in, you're moving all around. Uh, when you're painting, you're doing the same sort of thing. A yes. Little here, a yes. Little there. Yes. That's how I capture the, the likeness. 
I, that's how I move. Yes. I want to, in fact, when I'm painting, I think I'm even faster because then we're dealing with this um, brush that is wet. And I'm literally, you're right. I'm, I mean, this is, uh, it, it's different. Do you see the way I hold my brush, my pencil? I hold it like that. I do the same thing with the paintbrush. You see? And, and so the paintbrush is so fluid. I do like this. And it's almost like the paint, like the image is speaking to me and I just have to get all that darkness in first and then I'll go and get that medium in and then I'll go back and, and you know, make the lights or where, you know, because I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just leave the lights with an eraser like a drawing. I'm gonna put in the lights with a painting. So yes, I dance around the painting. And it's almost, I have to say, it's like working myself up into a meditation with the way I'm moving, you know? I'm trying to get it all in very quickly and I'm still measuring things with lights and darks. You know, I'm starting to see things. And as you go, you finesse, you finesse. And this well, is dark. I hope it's possible to see you do a painting demo. Of oh boy, you have to get me out the trance. <laughs> <laughs> I love to paint. I mean, like I actually won't paint if I know that I may get interrupted. Uh, by some, like, you know, like um, if somebody knocking at the door or if somebody's coming over, or if I know the baby's gonna wake up, I won't paint. Because when I paint and I really get into it, I'll be painting for hours, hours and hours. And it just goes like that. I'll paint until dawn, you know? So painting for me is just a luxury. I just love it. It is the medium that I choose to, to speak and you know, I think a lot of artists, they, they may not tell you everything that they tell you and that they can tell you in their work, you know, so it's so important. It's like I'm, I'm actually speaking with my work, you know, I'm actually speaking, so. Uh, well, yeah. we're coming up on 7.30. Oh, wow. Um, look, guys, look how fast that went. I'm so uh -huh. I know, it always does. It's mesmerizing to watch people uh, draw and paint, at least for me. Um, I just wanted to open up uh, the platform and see if anyone else had any questions before uh, we wrap up, if anyone had any questions for Inga. Uh, Inga will be teaching a self-portrait painting class in the fall, and she's teaching a self-portraiture drawing class um, starting this Thursday. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be really interesting because I'm, I, you know, one thing I just love is to see other people's work. That's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. This came together so beautifully. I, I love this portrait. And your eyes I'll are really intense. It. And I'll finish it and I'll post it on my Google Classrooms. Okay, yeah, or send it to me and I can send it to all the participants because I have. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, email. I love them. Oh, I yeah. hope I can see their work. Yes. Yeah. It would be fun to do a follow-up for okay. sure. We're going to do a follow-up. I'll have it done for you very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great. Sweet. All right. Well, thank okay, you everyone for joining us tonight. It was great to see so many familiar faces and names. Um, please do join us tomorrow. We have a leeway artist who's been in residence with us, Ada Trio who will be talking about her work and her experience as a resident um, and showing us her photographs. She's a photographer. And then we'll also meet on Thursday for a cool jewelry uh, wax carving demonstration with Raj Babakian, one of our teaching artists. That should also be quite interesting. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. And thanks again for tonight. Thank you so much, Inga. This was oh, so you. fun was and so incredible and so great to talk to you and uh, ask you all those questions. I hope it wasn't too many. <laughs> oh, I, no, it was great. I really, I just love being around people. I'm never around people, you know, I'm always in the house, especially during the quarantine, you know? It's like, you don't get to see people. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice way to connect. I, I do enjoy doing these. Um, you know, a couple of times a week. It's really fun. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right, everyone. Stay safe, be well, and we hope to see you again really soon. Okay. Thank you. Have a great one. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay.